So today I wanted to join two STL meshes and I went into Mesh Mixer and I made, tried to make that happen. And I created an STL file that was, that was decent and would work, but it was causing me some issues in Simplify 3D. So what I ended up doing is I went into Simplify 3D and I took a look at separate connected surfaces. And that created two different surfaces. It split apart all the work that I did in Simplify 3D, but then it would slice properly made me think about something. And I realized that I didn't need to get into Mesh Mixer to make that happen. So the problem was is that I have this guy here. And the hole here is a, a through hole for a quarter 20 screw, but I wanted it to be a threaded hole. So I didn't want to have to take this guy here and there's a screw right there. I didn't want it to just pass in and out and I didn't have an area here where I could put a nut onto it. I just wanted to be able to create the threads in there. So what I ended up doing was downloading a, an STL file with the threads. And then what I ended up doing is just imported the threads into Simplify 3D along with the model I got from Thingy Thingiverse and I sliced it and it worked. It's brilliant and it's really simple. So if you have something like this and you want to attach something to it, you don't have to go into a mesh uh, mesh, mesh mixer or into a CAD software package if it's really basic and two surfaces just need to be dis, um, joined up together just join them together and simplify 3D. Here let me show you how it's done. So here's the file I wanted to join. It's this Zoom H1 tripod uh, floor shock mount. Uh, the problem I had is is that well, not that one. This little hole in here is just the through hole and it'll pass a quarter 20 bolt but doesn't actually thread anything on. I wanted to actually thread something into it. Now, what I ended up doing was is going into a CAD system and then modeling up the threads and trying to attach it to the STL and then trying to take that STL and slice it and it didn't work all that well. So here's basically what the workflow comes down to. We could go through how I discovered this but it doesn't really matter is that I know that the hole there will pass the threads, so if I can just find some threads that I can throw into there, that should work. So what I did is, is I did a quarter 20 nut STL search, and I found that on GrabCAD, if you go there, they have a nut that is the quarter 20 nut. So um, when you take a look at this, you have the STL files, right? So these STL files are correct and the threads work well. So we've got everything that we need. We've got the nut and we've got the other one. So let's just get into Simplify 3D. I've zoomed out of there. Now, what I want to do is first I want to import the nut. So I'm going to go into the downloads that I downloaded the nut from. Come in here and we'll download this guy. And you see a little tiny nut down there. Now there's a couple of things wrong with it. One is, is that I have to double click on it. I need to rotate it about the X axis. Um, so if I do 90, you'll notice that we have the nice flats there and that works out fine. Um, the other thing you can take into account is, is that with this nut is that it shows up below the surface, but they also have these little sort of um, these curve fillets in here that you have to deal with, but it's not that big of a deal. So we've got the nut in there, but it's not centered on the XY. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and hit center and arrange. So what that does is it lifts the nut up so that it's on the surface and it centers it right in there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to import and go to my downloads again and the shock mount and we'll go to the files We take that shock mount and we're going to drop it in on top here. Now you'll notice that that file fits in there perfectly or those threads fit in there perfectly. And I don't want to have this nut just slightly proud so I can double click on it and it's the um, Z offset. So let's just go 8. Let's see what 8 does. Just about to the surface. So we're going to say 7.8. And you can see it's just about at the surface. I'm going to just put it slightly below. So we're going to do 7.7. .7. Now it's slightly below the surface. Now some people might be somewhat concerned about what I'm going to show you here. Is if I zoom in, you can notice Come up a little bit. You'll notice that that nut is down below the surface, but that's okay because basically what's going to happen is, is it's going to it's going to do all the slicing from everything from this line up. So it's going to get rid of all that stuff, and it's not that big of a deal. So at this point, what I do is I just do prepare to print, and it gives me the slicing. Now let's just go back through the slicing history, and we'll take a look at things. Now we're into that one section where the nut is in there. 
but you'll notice that the nut file really isn't there. All that's showing is those threads. So effectively what we've done is we've captured the threads right within this part and we haven't had to do any CAD systems or we haven't had to go and do any modeling. All we needed to do was to get the actual part that we needed with the hole and the hole happened to be the right size, yes, but, and then we added the nut and we put that inside and we just meshed it. Now, when you do the STL file or you do the slicing, you get a 3D print. It already has the threads in it and you can screw everything together and Bob's your uncle. This thing is like uh, really quick and it was awesome to be able to create the part I needed just in seconds by finding the files that I needed. So we have this guy here, like I said in the video, with the hole it was too big and this guy, let's see if we can orient that right, you see it just pushes in and out and I don't want that because I can't put a nut on the top here. So. What I ended up doing was is taking that STL file, making a print with the nut or with the threads. And now that we have the threads there, you'll notice that I can thread this guy in here. And very quickly, I have a workable part with everything I need. Now, one thing that you could take into account is, is like, say you need an adapter from this shoe to another kind of adapter for another different tripod. Figure out where the STL file is for this one. Find out where the STL file is for the other shoe. Have them sit just on top of each other. Slice it and you're done. Like this is a great way to start combining things. So get it out there. Try it. Let me know. Tell me if this works for you. Um, and also let us know how you might put this to use. Talk to you later.